Okay, so in last few classes probably we have started discussing about uh, random process and uh, in the very last class uh, I think we have proven uh, one of the most important uh, property of a random process uh, which will be heavily used for our uh, case of uh, noise analysis. So, that is called the winner kinchin theorem. Right. So, that is something we have already proven. We have said that uh, if a process is at least wide sense stationary, then what we can do is uh, we can always evaluate the autocorrelation function. Uh, that is the ensemble autocorrelation the way we have defined and then uh, we know that, that uh, if it is wide sense stationary then ensemble autocorrelation function should be just dependent on the separation of uh, time instance where the samples are picked. And if you do a Fourier transform of that autocorrelation function, then you get the average power spectral density. So, this is this is one of the most fundamental theorem that we have proven which will be heavily used because that is how we can actually uh, take any random signal and then uh, try to guess what will be the spectral uh, quality of that signal, right? Uh, which spectrum uh, components are present, which are not present. So, all those spectral analysis or visualizing the se signal from the frequency perspective that will be uh, useful for us. Okay. So, let us try to define uh, on that same line uh, some more property uh, uh, regarding this autocorrelation function. So, let us say I have a wide sense stationary process x t. Okay, so, whenever we are mentioning, we are always mentioning that it is at least wide sense stationary, whether it is stationary or not because we have to go for a higher order. So, that is something we have seen. Uh, so, at least wide sense stationary has to be mentioned. So, this is the process which has an autocorrelation function. Once it is wide sense stationary, then we know that autocorrelation function just depends on the time difference between the samples we are picking. So, it is R x tau which we have defined as x t x t plus tau and the ensemble average over that, right. So, that was our definition. Immediately, if we try to guess what will be R x minus tau, so that should be x t x t minus tau average, right. Now, what we can do is we can we can assume that t minus tau is sigma, right. So, immediately we can represent t to be sigma plus tau, right. And I can write this as x sigma plus tau x sigma average. Now, sigma is just a uh, time, right. So, it can be any dummy variable. So, I can again put t uh, in place of sigma and it is just for uh, evaluating that dummy variable and it does not depend on uh, basically we have uh, told already this entire autocorrelation function does not depend on that particular value right t where it starts or sigma. So, it does not matter whatever I take. Uh, so, I can immediately say that this and these two are equivalent. So, this is actually R x tau. So, this is a fundamental property of autocorrelation function. We have also proven this same thing for uh, time autocorrelation part right earlier when we were dealing with deterministic signal at that time we have proven that autocorrelation function for a particular sample signal which is deterministic in nature it is always event symmetric for a real signal right. Same thing is happening for a random process also. So, the way we define autocorrelation function we can again see that it is event symmetric that means uh, minus tau is same as uh, Rx tau right. So, this is true and then we can also try to guess what is this that autocorrelation function when this tau separation is 0, which is if I just put it in this definition it becomes x t multiplication x t or oh, that is just x square t average. And then we have said this is white sense stationary signal. So, therefore, uh, the means uh, first order or second order if I just take no separation. So, first order, second order up to nth uh, means any order uh, mean should be uh, or moment should be independent of time. So, it should be x square bar and that is the means means uh, that is the standard deviation or means variance of uh, 
the signal. Okay. So, what it says that the autocorrelation function already captures the means uh, associated whatever underlying associated random process is there. Uh, any time you actually sample it, uh, it, it can be any time because every time is equivalent and if you take the variance of it, it should be that. Okay. So, as long as the mean is uh, same, this is actually becoming the power of that signal. right? So, that is also very true because we have also told that x square t if we just uh, try to guess how, how much is that. So, that should be the power and uh, in a different way also we can uh, correlate it to the power uh, if suppose the signal is also ergodic then what will happen the second order means uh, this same average time average if we wish to calculate that should give me the power. So, that is equivalent because it is ergodic signal. So, immediately we can say this gets correlated or related to the power of the signal. Okay. So, uh, what we can understand from these things that autocorrelation is a very strong property of a signal, it just gives me back many information about the signal itself. Okay. I do a Fourier transform, I get the spectrum of the signal of course, the average spectrum. I uh, put 0 in place of tau, then I get the power of the signal back. Okay. As long as the signal holds some property like it is ergotic, it is white sense stationary and all those things. Okay. The other part is this, what I know that this is R x tau is actually the Fourier inverse Fourier transform of the power spectral density. So, if I write power spectral density as S x f, okay. so therefore, it must be to the power j 2 pi f tau d f. Now, we know that at R x tau equal to 0, it becomes power. So, let us try to evaluate that R x 0 over here also within the integration tau must be 0. So, once tau is 0, this becomes 1. So, it is just minus infinity plus infinity S x f d f. This is a well known thing that that is the power. So, power is nothing but the average sense power spectral density that you have got for this particular random signal. So, that power spectral density like the deterministic signal you just integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity over the frequency domain you will be again getting back the power. Okay. So, it is all sitting very nicely mathematically as you can see the way we have we have actually developed a strong tool to evaluate the random process and then once we have developed that tool we can see everything is now almost getting similar. Uh, representation with respect to our deterministic signal. Okay. Whatever we have understood in deterministic signal here also we are almost getting similar representation. We know a power spectral density of course, this power spectral density is a average power spectral density, but it behaves like for a deterministic signal whatever power spectral density we were having. For that also we are integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity in frequency domain we are getting back power. Here also same thing is happening, we are integrating it we are getting power back. Okay. So, that is that is very nice uh, everything is sitting nicely. Now, let us try to uh, probably in the last class we have already started characterizing noise with this random process. So, we have told the most random noise that we can think of is having probably a autocorrelation function which is R x tau which must be almost like delta. Okay with some strength let us say that that is related to the noise power. Okay. Let us say that strength is n by 2. Okay. So, therefore, that strength must be n by 2. Okay. So, we are just saying that this is probably the uh, representation of noise. There were some uh, reasoning behind it that we were saying this is the noise because it is a kind of signal where in the current time if I have some if I observed some voltage level or some current level or power level whatever it is next time instance however infinitesimally small or closer it is to this current time instant I will have no predictability. That means, I will not be able to say that it should be within this range I will have no predictability it can take any value any value possible from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, that is 
probably the most random noise that can come across whenever we are transmitting uh, or that we can come across whenever we are transmitting some signal right. So, that is why we say that is that is basic noise which is uh, something which is completely random uh, with respect to our signal transmission and the autocorrelation function immediately is very high correlation whenever we are not shifting it, but a slight shift in fire even if it is infinitesimally small that should take the autocorrelation function to 0. Okay. So, it should not be correlated because I cannot have any predictability with respect to the current observation. So, that should be represented as delta function immediately what we can see for noise the power spectral density becomes because we know that if it is a delta function of eta by 2 if we just do a Fourier transform that is what we have uh, understood that Fourier transform of autocorrelation function should be giving me back the average pass power spectral density. So, that should be this. So, it should be with eta by 2 or n by 2 whichever way you represent. So, that should be the noise. So, this is the most random noise that you can uh, counter and fortunately most of the noise you will be seeing looks almost like that within the band of our interest. Of course, it will not be uh, flat over the entire band because then noise power if you start uh, integrating it from minus infinity plus infinity that is what we have understood that noise power will be from minus infinity plus infinity you will have to integrate, but if you start doing that it will be infinite right. So, noise power will be infinite in that case, but within the band of our interest probably this will be flat. Okay. So, that is that is a very important understanding that it will be probably flat of course, at a very higher band it will start showing some low pass effect, okay. but within the band of your interest this will remain flat. Okay. So, that is that is the characteristics of uh, general uh, noise. Now, let us try to see most of the time what we will be encountering in the communication means whenever uh, there is noise in communication. What we can see if the noise is like this suppose from the channel it is coming like this. So, if I just allow the entire noise then huge amount of power because you integrate over the entire uh, frequency domain huge amount of power noise power will be coming into my signal and that will of course, contaminate the overall signal. So, I want to reduce the noise power because I want to increase enhance the signal to noise ratio or signal to noise power signal power to noise power. Signal power means whatever message I am transmitting related to that the power related to that and noise power is whatever is coming out okay, out of this process. Now, I wish to suppress this noise power because otherwise my signal to noise ratio will be very high which is not good because if noise is bigger than signal I will not be able to uh, means uh, decode my signal. Okay. So, if this is the case then what I will be employing most of the time I know my signal will be within a band of interest. If it is modulated it will be in a band if or maybe a in a pass band if it is not modulated directly transmitted in the base band it will be a low pass signal. Okay. So, whatever it is I will have to employ either a low pass filter or a band pass filter. So, that is why you will see that uh, most of our energy now will be concentrated on characterizing this low pass noise and band pass noise. Okay. So, that is something we will be uh, concentrating on. So, first let us try to see what happens to the low pass noise. So, I know the noise spectral density is something like this which is flat. Okay. Now, I let us say I pass it through a ideal low pass filter which has a characteristics of this from minus b to b it has transfer function 1 and rest of the places it is just 0. Okay. So, if I just pass this through this process what do we get. Okay. So, this is something probably we will have to now see that a particular random process if it is pass means passing through a particular uh, transfer function or a particular system how the output will look like. Okay. So, that is something we will try to characterize now and after that probably we will characterize this low pass. So, let us say I have a system which has a transfer function of h f okay, and the associated impulse response which is the inverse transform of this which is h t. Okay, so, I know this and I do give a input x t which is 
let us say a stationary or at least wide sense stationary random process. And I want to get some output and I want to now characterize this output. The output also will be random, okay. it should be a random process, but I want to characterize this random process. Okay. But what we know that if for a given x t and if I know this h t, this should be for a linear time invariant system, it should be convolution of this two. So, I can ev immediately evaluate y t should be minus infinity plus infinity h alpha x t minus alpha d alpha, right. This is something I know, okay. Because I have told that this particular system through which I am passing my signal that is linear time invariant, and we have already characterized that for linear time invariant, this is what happens output and input get this relationship as long as I know the transfer function or the associated impulse response. Okay. So, if this is the case, now I want to characterize this output process. So, what I have to do? How do I characterize? So far we have discussed that characterizing any random process requires cal calculation of autocorrelation function. So, therefore, I need to evaluate also y t plus tau, right. It is all about that. So, y t plus tau will be just it is when I am passing by x t plus tau that should be because it is linear time invariant. So, time wise it should be just y t plus tau because it is time invariant. So, y t plus tau must be according to our understanding of linear time invariant system that's, that should be x t plus tau minus alpha the alpha right. This is something we have already understood that linear time invariant system should work like this. So, therefore, now all I have to do is find out the autocorrelation function. So, r y tau I will try to find out which is nothing but y t y t plus tau ensemble average right which is nothing but these two ensemble average. So, minus infinity plus infinity h of course, there are two integration I will be merging these two integrations. So, this integration variable inside variable I will take any I can take any dummy variable. So, I will take alpha for one and beta for another one right. So, the first one I will pick alpha x t minus alpha d alpha second one I will pick as beta. So, that should be h beta x t plus tau minus beta d beta right and I need to do this. Now, these two integration are not dependent on each other. So, I can actually club them together. Now, this ensemble averaging that is really on x that has nothing to do with this internal variable of alpha and beta. So, therefore, ensemble average can be taken inside. So, I can write this as h alpha does not depend on that. So, which is uh, not dependent on that x random process. So, h alpha remains as it is, h beta remains as it is and x t minus alpha x t plus tau minus beta I take an average of that d alpha d beta I can write this right. Now, what is this? This is if t minus alpha I take as some something okay, let us say sigma then this should be sigma plus something. Okay. I can immediately write that as sigma plus something. So, this is just nothing but a autocorrelation function of x which I know already and I know x is stationary. See for this probably I have written a wrong thing. I still did not know while doing this whether the output process will remain stationary or not. I had no idea. I have written this, but I should not have written this. I should have written this as t t plus tau because I do not know whether this will be stationary or not. Okay, or wide sense stationary or not, but x I know for sure because that is the into input process I have given and I have chosen it to be wide sense stationary. Right. So, if that is the case this must be function of just tau which is the separation between these two. Right. So, I can write this as r y. So, let us write it correctly t t plus tau must be minus infinity plus infinity minus infinity plus infinity this is h alpha this is h beta and this becomes this minus this if I just do. So, that should be t will be cancelled and I have tau plus alpha minus beta. So, that should be tau plus alpha minus beta d alpha d beta 
Okay. If you just carefully see this, this is just two basically convolution, nothing other than that. So, it can be written as h tau, I, I will not do that, this is uh, take that as homework. This is just a two convolution, we already know single convolution. If you just do it two times, this will be a convolution of h tau, h minus tau and r x tau. Okay. This is the convolution of these three things. So, therefore, it is just a variable of tau only nothing else. So, therefore, I can now, now write my output process that r y that is just a variable of tau that has nothing to do with t because t is already getting cancelled due to the property of x where x was white sense stationary. Okay. So, immediately I can see the output process which is being generated it is also a white sense stationary process. So, if the input remains white sense stationary I can pass it through any LTI linear time invariant system, I will always get a output process which is also a white sense stationary process okay. and the process is related to this. Now, I can do a Fourier transform of this. So, immediately I will get S y f because this is the autocorrelation function. So, Fourier transform of that winner Kinchin process uh, tells me as long as this is white sense stationary which is the case, I will be getting my average power spectral density. So, I get average power spectral density. Now, if I do Fourier transform of this, this should be h f and this should be h minus f or h star f. So, that must be mod h f square and Fourier transform of this must be s x f because this is the autocorrelation function of the input signal. That is a very nice fundamental result we have got. Okay. So, two things we have derived through this process. One is that I give a input to a linear time invariant system. Remember all these things has to happen. It has to be linear time invariant. We have put all the formulas of y t, y t plus tau knowing that it is linear time invariant. Otherwise, I could not have written that. Okay. So, the process has to be linear time invariant and the input should be white sense stationary at least. If this two condition happens properly, I know that the output process also will be white sense stationary at least. Okay. And on top of that, I can get the power spectral density which is nothing but the transfer function square of that linear time invariant system or mod square of that linear time invariant system multiplied by the input average power spectral density. Okay. So, this is a very fundamental result which we will use for characterizing that low pass system. Okay. So, now try to just see what we were doing for that low pass system. I was having a noise which was characterized by this ideal noise of having power spectral density. So, this is my input let us say S x f. Okay. So, this is my input which has a power spectral density of this which is constant over the entire frequency range having value eta y 2. Okay. Now, I pass it through a ideal low pass filter having bandwidth b. So, what do I get? This is 1. So, therefore, I must just get this into mod if this is h f mod of this square because this is all 1 between minus b to b it will remain 1. So, I will just get eta by 2 over that band and rest of the cases it should be all 0. So, my output that s y f must be like this it is eta by 2 from minus b to plus b and everywhere else it is 0. right? And then actually I can talk about this process I cannot talk about the power of this because as I have told that probably we are just representing it, but it is actually showing infinite power because from minus infinity to plus infinity you integrate it will be infinity, but actually it is not like that. It should have a low pass characteristics at a very high uh, frequency probably it will show some low pass characteristics, but I am not bothered about that. It is flat in the region of interest of my frequency okay. and then I wish to see what will be the output noise power. Now, I can integrate this to get my output noise power. So, that should be nothing but eta by 2 into 2 b because it is all constant. So, integration will be just multiplication of this the band 
and that uh, overall power spectral density so that should be eta into b. So, this happens to be a low pass noise power. Okay. So, whenever you have a noise which is most random possibly that can be and most of the cases it is. Okay. So, and that noise if you pass through a low pass filter with all our derivation winner from starting from winner kinchin to what happens if I pass it through a LTI system. So, after doing all these things this simple understanding we have got that the output noise power I will be able to evaluate. This is going to be a very important part of our noise analysis further. You have to be very careful about doing these things correctly. Okay. So, once this is being done let us try to understand some more property of this whole processes. Okay. So, one thing is that is called in when we were talking about random variable we were actually trying to show the joint PDF of two random variables right. Same thing we will now try to do over here also. And when we will be doing noise analysis you will see why that is important. Uh, it is it's, uh, it's really required that we, we take two processes and then try to see their means either correlation or cross correlation whatever you term them. Okay. So, without proof I will give some of the theorems which are required for us because if we start proving all of them probably will be uh, means we will not be able to cover the uh, major part of analog communication uh, in the duration of this course. So, I will give some property of it. So, the first part is cross correlation. Okay. So, cross correlation function between two random process x and y both of them we assume to be wide sense stationary at least. So, both x and y or I should say x t and y t they are independently means I should not say independent over here because uh, that is another property. I should just say that they are probably means they are actually at least wide sense stationary okay. up to second order I know that they are stationary. Then the cross correlation is defined as this. Still I have not exerted the property of their being means white sand stationary. If they are then I should be getting this just a difference of these two. So, this must be R x y just a function of T 2 minus T 1. It should not have the sense of origin that uh, it should not be dependent on sense of origin. It is just the difference between these two time instant it should be dependent on that. Okay. Or I can write this as R x y tau, where tau is defined as T 2 minus T 1, the time difference. Okay. All right. So, this is what it should be. Now, <coughs> and this will happen, see, both of them are probably white sense stationary, but if this has to happen then there is probably I have not mentioned another extra property which is required that is called they should be jointly stationary as well. So, independently they might be when separately they might be stationary white sense stationary, but they should be also jointly either fully stationary or white sense stationary that has to happen then only their cross correlation will be dependent on just the separation of the time instance we are taking. So, there is a now you can see that there is a concept of joint stationarity. Okay. Now next thing we will be defining which is called uncorrelated. We have already seen it for uh, random variables. Now we will see for random process what, what do we mean by uncorrelated? It is just by definition. Okay. Okay, uncorrelated random process. At that time this R x y tau that we have defined if they are jointly stationary. Okay. So, this is as we know it is x t and sorry okay. 
So what should happen? This must be okay. So when they are uncorrelated, I should be able to just get the autocorrelation joint or cross correlation function to be just the multiplication of their respective mean value. Okay. And because it is stationary, these two processes are stationary, so there is no notion of time because mean at any time will be same. Okay. So, therefore, if two processes are uncorrelated, this must be happening. Okay. So, what we will do? Uh, we will we'll try to define some more property of these things in the next class uh, and we will see how they are uh, means they will be utilized in our further processing. Okay. Thank you.